As early as 2020, there might be a manned mission to Mars, the first to carry humans to another planet. Traveling to Mars will be a huge risk. It will take nine months just to fly there, a round trip of at least a year and a half. We will settle Mars, we will live there, it's a sister planet, it's there, it's beckoning our call, and we will inhabit it very much like where you inhabit uh, the Earth. And I can't tell you why or how quickly. People are gonna say, what about water, what about, it's all there, all we've got to do is go find it and make it happen. Carolyn Porco is a planetary scientist whose professional career has coincided with the modern era of planetary exploration. She's devoted her life to the giant outer planets that lie beyond Mars. No matter how you cut it, the vast majority of our solar system exists out beyond the orbits of the asteroids. Inside, you have four measly little terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And while they're very important to us, especially the third one, most of the solar system is way beyond us. In 1977, two identical Voyager spacecraft were launched to Jupiter on a path that would then catapult them onto Saturn. It was a now or never opportunity that took advantage of an alignment of the outer planets that only happens once every 176 years. Voyager 1 was spun out of the plane of the solar system, but Voyager 2 was flung on towards Uranus and Neptune. Voyager 2 sailed past Uranus at 40,000 miles per hour. It made its final rendezvous with Neptune after traveling over four billion miles. The Voyager spacecraft were the most sophisticated machines of their time. Their cameras would electronically record pictures and their large white dishes beamed them back. The scientists knew that one day their spacecraft would fly beyond the solar system. They were keen to include a message for any curious aliens. Gold-plated LPs with greetings from every nation on Earth were bolted onto the spacecraft. They came complete with instructions and a stylus. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, an organization of 147 member states, I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. Silema, Chemen. Oitinus poteste, chairete. Paz y felicidad a todos. Two years after launch, Voyager approached Jupiter. It recorded this remarkable time-lapse image of the king of the planet spinning on its axis. Hard to believe that this giant gas bag could swallow more than 1,300 Earths. Jupiter's four largest moons, Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, and Io, were clearly visible as they orbited the planet. Here, circling the largest planet, was an entire planetary system in miniature. I was one of those people standing in front of the monitors watching these images come down for the first time. Things we had never ever seen. People were lost for words. Very intelligent, bright people who'd studied planets their whole lives were lost for words. You know, I had the impression of being on the bow of a ship and, you know, entering uncharted territories and discovering things that no human had ever seen before. Strangest of all were Jupiter's cloud tops. Here in intricate detail was the fearsome beauty of the great red spot, a hurricane twice the size of the Earth, for some unfathomable reason has been raging for more than 300 years.
Jupiter spins so fast that with a day less than 10 hours long, its clouds are drawn into streaks around the planet. Unlike Earth, its multicolored clouds are not powered by the sun. These storms of liquid marble are fueled by heat inside the planet. A childhood fascination with the king of the planets set amateur astronomer David Levy on a path that would help him discover a comet and predict Jupiter's most dangerous moment. Well, I've been fascinated with Jupiter since the summer of 1960. That summer, I had my first telescope, and with my parents, I went outside, set it up, and looked up at the sky and saw the brightest star in the whole sky. It had four little moons and little bands across it, and I said, hey, that's Jupiter. It's the first thing I ever looked at through a telescope. And I think if that particular night, if my dad had said, you know, in 35 years from now, a comet with your name on it is going to go smashing into that planet, I would have been pretty surprised. In 1993, David Levy helped discover an icy juggernaut that had roamed the back streets of the solar system for over four billion years. But Comet Shoemaker Levy No. 9 hadn't reckoned on the mighty gravitational power of Jupiter. The broken fragments were being sucked in by the largest planet in the solar system. Like bombers in formation, Shoemaker Levy 9 made its final approach. Fragments plummeted down through the endless atmosphere. On the 16th of July, 1994, the astronomers back on Earth watched the mighty flare as the first fragment smashed into Jupiter. The titanic collisions left a series of massive scars across the planet. Jupiter is the solar system's vacuum cleaner. If Jupiter weren't there, those comets would still be running around, smashing into all of the inner planets, including the Earth. The Earth would be being hit by comets instead of once every 100,000 years, might be being hit every 100 years or every 1,000 years and we couldn't be here. We couldn't live on an Earth that was being smashed by a comet every thousand years. But it was Jupiter's moons that held the greatest surprise. When Voyager turned its cameras on the innermost moon, Io, it revealed the most active and dynamic body in our solar system. At the time of the Voyager flybys of Io back in 1979, we got our first close-up pictures of Io from the spacecraft as it flew past. And one of the engineers saw these sort of weird clouds and 